A very good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor. Well, it is the start of a brand new week, and this is your one-stop show for all the very latest developments that have taken place during the weekend that you all need to know and that are changing our world. Let us start the bulletin with the headlines. Prime Minister appeals to all states to work with Centre as a team. India at a Niti Aayog meet asks them to decide goals for 2022 and work on a mission mode. Vice President to embark on a five-day two-nation tour to Amer Armenia and Poland to hold talks on wide range of issues with leaders of both the nations, especially trade. Arun Jaitley raises uh, the issue of H-1B visa with his U.S. counterpart, highlights the contribution of the Indian companies and professionals to the U.S. economy. Nearly 54% polling in municipal polls in Delhi are alleges of faulty EVMs. State Election Commission says uh, 18 EVMs replaced due to battery-related issues. And centrist Emmanuel Macron to face far-right leader Marine Le Pen in runoff for the French presidency on 7th of May. First round results show an edge for Macron. Our top story this morning, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday called upon states to work with the centre as part of Team India. He urged the states uh, to help identify goals for 2022 and work in a mission mode towards achieving them. Addressing the third meeting of the Governing Council of Niti Aayog, he stressed on better governance and asked them to work in tandem. In his address to the Niti Aayog's Governing Council, Prime Minister Narendra Modi discussed his 15-year vision document and asked each state to share their views. With around 30 chief ministers in attendance, the meeting also discussed the government's strategy over the next seven years and a three-year action plan. कई स्टेट्स ने बहुत अच्छा काम किया है वो हरे रंग में थे जो स्टेट्स ने ठीक काम किया वो येलो रंग में थे और जो स्टेट्स ने उतना अच्छा परफॉर्म नहीं किया था वो लाल में थे तो सबको आग से नजर आ रहा था कि भाई कौन स्टेट्स को इंप्रूव करना है हेल्थ इन्फेंट मोर्टेलिटी में मेटरनल मोर्टेलिटी में और जिनके यहाँ डॉक्टर्स की कमी है बेड्स की कमी है तो ये सब दिखाया और जब तक वो लाल हरा नहीं होगा तब तक देश आगे नहीं जा पाए in response to the Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti's appeal, the Prime Minister urged all the state governments to reach out to the students of Jammu and Kashmir in their respective states. She had also uh, uh, mentioned that uh, uh, Kashmiri children who are studying in the other states, uh, uh, please uh, 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 turn them into, the, uh, uh, in, into your ambassadors back to Kashmir. Uh, <laughs> And, and, and the Prime Minister uh, uh, stressed on that. Some non-BJP state chief ministers missed the meet. There was a consensus that work should be started to double the income of the farmers. In his closing address, Prime Minister Modi also said that the vision of new India can be realized only through the combined efforts of all the states and chief ministers. The vision document projects the economy to grow more than threefold to 469 lakh crore rupees by 2031-32 from 137 lakh crore rupees in 2015 and 16, assuming an 8% annual growth. The think tank's day-long third meeting was held at Rashpati Bhavan after 21 months. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi yesterday also held a meeting with the Chief Ministers of 13 BJP rule states on Sunday. During the meet, the Chief Ministers gave presentation on the work done by their governments especially in the implementation of uh, social welfare schemes. The meeting was attended by Union Ministers uh, Rajnath Singh, uh, Venkaya Naidu, Sushma Swaraj, Nitin Gadkari and uh, BJP President Amit Shah. A similar meeting of the Chief Ministers of uh, BJP rule states was held on uh, 27th of August last year. The meeting comes ahead of the BJP-led government completing three years at the centre on 26th of May. On to some other news, the government has made a domestic uh, procurement mandatory for 75% of metro rail cars and 25% of its critical equipment. The move is a fresh push for the Make in India campaign. 
The Urban Development Ministry has incorporated the new conditions in the Metro Company's tender requirements, making the new norms effective immediately. Until now, it was not mandatory for the companies to procure a Metro rail cars manufactured in India. As many as 1,912 Metro coaches are currently operational in the country, and there is an immediate requirement of more than 1,000 cars. Over the years, more than 1,600 Metro cars would be required, and each coach is estimated to cost about uh, 10 crore rupees. Now, the new norm makes it mandatory for the companies to purchase 25% of the critical equipment and subsystems from within the country. The ministry has also standardized uh, the norms for coaches and uh, signaling equipment, lower, uh, covering about 90% of the imports. Debt-ridden uh, farmers from Tamil Nadu who have been protesting in the national capital have called off their protest after over 40 days. This comes hours after they met uh, with the state uh, chief minister E. Palani Sami yesterday. The chief minister assured the farmers that their demands will be met and urged them to call off their protest. Palani Sami submitted a memorandum containing demands of the farmers to Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday. The farmers uh, union said uh, that they will resume their strike if their demands are not met by 25th of May. The farmers had been staging protests at Jantar Mantar demanding a drought relief and waiver of loans from the center. Over the days, uh, the farmers used uh, several unconventional ways uh, to highlight their demands such as uh, shaving off uh, half of their moustaches and heads, keeping mice and snakes in their mouth and uh, carrying the uh, skulls of other farmers who they claim have committed suicide. They said that a lack of uh, rains last year caused a crop, crop failure, forcing uh, many of them to default on loans uh, taken from the banks and money lenders. The CM also told, we will help you, we will write off the loan borrowed by you, not only in cooperative bank, we will ask the Prime Minister also to, do, also to write off the loan in the Nationalist Bank. Yes, if they will not fulfill the uh, promise, we will agitate and fulfill. More news from the national capital, the high stakes at Delhi municipal poll saw a voter turnout of around 54% on Sunday amid complaints of faulty EVMs from the Aam Admi Party. Delhi Chief Minister said that the faulty EVMs have prevented people from exercising their rights. Uh, meanwhile, a polling for two wards were postponed due to the death of the candidates here. The Delhi municipal polls concluded on Sunday with a voter turnout of around 54% just surpassing the figures of 2012 polls. Following a slow start in the morning, voting gradually picked up and became fairly brisk towards the evening. You can say it is around 54 percent. And uh, polling percent of uh, East, East Delhi is around 55 percent or more. Similarly, North is little less than East Delhi. It is a 54 percent plus and uh, 50 percent is the uh, South Delhi. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jriwal, meanwhile, once again rigged up the issue of EVMs, claiming that faulty EVMs prevented many voters from casting their votes. The Aam Aadmi Party Supreme also alleged that many voters with valid voter slips were not allowed to exercise their franchise. The State Election Commission, however, said 18 EVMs were replaced owing to battery or button-related issues. Election Commission of Delhi has done a very shoddy job right from bringing the Generation 1 EVMs, पहली generation 15 साल पुरानी मशीने लेके आए, जिसके अंदर कोई भी paper trail नहीं था, जिससे वोटर को नहीं पता चल रहा, उसका वोट कहां जा रहा है, उसके बाद इन्होंने इस तरीके के घपले बाजी की है वोटर लिस्ट के अंदर, ये बहुत ज़्यादा मुझे लगता है दुख देने वाली बात है, और बहुत ज़्यादा दिक्कत देने वाली बात है। the Aam Aadmi Party and the Congress hope to wrest power from the BJP, which has governed the municipal corporation for the last two terms. But the BJP is confident of another victory. दिल्ली में भारतीय जनता पार्टी की 200 ज्यादा सीटें आएंगी और दिल्ली भारतीय दिल्ली में भारतीय जनता पार्टी की को तीनों नगर निगमों में पुनः बहुमत मिलेगा दिल्ली में आम आदमी पार्टी पहली बारी लड़ रही है और जनता ने मन बनाया जैसे पहली बारी दिल्ली के अंदर आम आदमी की दिल्ली सरकार बनाई थी अब एमसीडी के अंदर भी आम आदमी की सरकार बनेगी कुछ बीजेपी वालों ने कंफ्यूज करने की कोशिश करी जैसे वो पहली बार इलेक्शन लड़ रहे हैं परंतु हम बताने में सफल रहे कि 10 साल से एमसीडी के अंदर बीजेपी ही है और उन्हीं की सरकार थी उन्हीं के खिलाफ वोट देना है ऑल द टॉल प्रॉमिसेस मेड बाय 
either Amatmi or BJP is not for uh, implementing. Its promises are only promises, nothing is being implemented. That is one of the main reasons why people are lacking interest in the election process. Polling was held in 270 of the 272 wards of the three municipal corporations. The election to two has been postponed due to the death of the candidates. The counting will be held on 26th of April. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's get you some more news from across the nation in Nationwide. The Election Commission has issued a letter of intent for the purchase of 16,15,000 VV pads during 2017-18 and 2018-19. The VV pads will be purchased at an estimated cost of over 3,100 crore rupees from Bharat Electronics Limited and Electronics Corporation of India Limited. The Commission will purchase over 8 lakh VV pads from each company by September next year. The Delhi police on uh, Sunday grilled uh, Sasikala's AIA DMK faction leader TTV Dinakaran for 11 hours over his alleged attempt to bribe an election commission official for retaining the two leaves of party symbol and the related money trail. Dinakaran, who was uh, brought to the national capital on Saturday, was quizzed for the second consecutive day. Eight persons, including seven children, were killed and 60 others injured as the bus they were travelling in overturned at a sharp bend in Pithoria, but Ratu Road in Jharkhand. The victims were the residents of Nagri in Kanke district. They were on their way to attend a marriage in Patratu when the mishap occurred. The injured have been admitted to the Najendra Institute of Medical Sciences in Ranchi. In breakfast news, time for a very short break. We'll be right back with more news. Stay with us. Nelson Roli Lala Mandela, affectionately known as Madiba, was South Africa's first democratically elected president, an international peacemaker and statesman, and a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Through a long career as an activist, Mandela was a crusader for equal rights for South Africa's black majority. Having undergone frequent imprisonment, in 1964, Mandela was sentenced to life in jail, charged with sabotage, treason and violent conspiracy. He narrowly escaped the gallows. He was released in 1990, having initiated talks with South African President de Klerk towards ending apartheid in the country. Mandela was awarded the Nobel Prize for Peace in 1993 for his efforts. In April 1994, the Mandela-led African National Congress won South Africa's first elections by universal suffrage. And Mandela was sworn in as president of the country's Hi. first multi-ethnic government. Nelson Mandela. He retired from the presidency in 1999 and from public life in 2004. Nelson Mandela died on December 5, 2013 from a recurring lung infection. from a multi-hued cultural canvas. <laughs> Tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries. <laughs> and encircling them all, there's a magic that awes. <laughs> 
Embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth. Watch Colors of India, Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Welcome, I'm Amritan Shirai and you're watching Law of the Land. Ministry of Water Resources shall make all efforts to get the best available data, get the best people. The dispute cannot be solved by negotiation. It has the authority to refer a dispute to the tribunal. The major complaint of the tribunal going on an unending expedition has now been removed. Watch. Law of the Land on Rajya Sabha Television. The splendid, grand and massive new Buddhist copper dome of the Rashtrapati Bhavan. It gets its influence from stupa at Sanchi. The dome is more than twice the height of the rest of the building. The reinforced concrete shell of the outer dome began to be formed during the beginning of 1929. The last stone of the dome was laid on April 6, 1929. Thanks for staying with us. Vice President uh, Mohammed Hamid Ansari will embark on a five-day two-nation tour to Armenia and uh, Poland today. Several agreements are expected to be signed during the visit, especially in the field of bilateral trade. On the first leg of the tour, Vice President Mohammed Hamid Ansari will be in the Armenian capital of Yerevan. There, he will hold talks with the Armenian President Serge Sargsyan and the Prime Minister Karin Karpetyan separately. There is scope for further cooperation in several sectors such as IT, pharmaceuticals, chemicals, automobiles, garments and textiles. Uh, the Indian group Kalpataru Power Transmission Limited is currently executing uh, a transmission tower project in Armenia. India assisted Armenia in setting up a center of excellence with the Param supercomputer. The Vice President will also address students of the Yerevan University during his visit. From Armenia, the Vice President will leave for Warsaw, the capital of Poland, on April 26. In Warsaw, Vice President Mohammed Hamid Ansari will hold discussions with the Polish President Andreas Duda, the Prime Minister Biata Shedvo and Speaker of the Senate. In terms of ease of doing business, India is becoming more and more a popular destination with our groups of 7% and a big market. Uh, certainly that has already attracted about $600 million uh, worth of Polish investments and we welcome more, including in the defence sector. Several agreements will be signed during the five-day visit to the two countries. The Vice President is being accompanied by his wife Salma Ansari, Union Minister of the State for Small, Medium and Micro Industries, Giriraj Singh, MP Sitaram Yechri, DP Tripathi and Thupstang Chewang and senior officials. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha Television. Now the issue of H-1B visa remained the focal point of discussion with Finance Minister Arun Jaitley raising the matter with his US counterpart Stephen Munchen yesterday. The move comes amidst fears from India that the curbs on H-1B visas would impact the movement of Indian IT professionals to America. During his meeting with the U.S. Treasury Secretary, Jaitley also highlighted the contribution that Indian companies and professionals are making to the U.S. economy. President Donald Trump, remember, had earlier signed an executive order for tightening the rules of the H-1B visa program to stop its misuse and ensure that visas are given to the most skilled or highest paid. 
Now, he has also emphasized on efforts to ensure free and fair trade practices. The finance minister, who was in a five-day U.S. visit, will today embark on his second leg of the visit to Russia. Jaitley is likely to meet a Russian defense minister, Sergei Shugu, to discuss bilateral relations and boost military ties between India and Russia. Jaitley will return to Delhi on 27th of April. On to the top international story now, snubbing the country's uh, political establishment, uh, voters in France have sent a far-right Marine Le Pen and political novice Emmanuel Macron through to the second round of the country's presidential election. With 96% of the polling stations declared, newcomer Macron was leading the field with 23.7% and national uh, front leader Le Pen was uh, close behind on 21.8%. The two are now set to face each other in a runoff election on 7th of May. Neither of the candidates uh, hails uh, from the establishment parties that have dominated the country for decades now. It was a stunning victory for Macron, a former investment banker who has never before stood for elected office. Though he served as the country's uh, economy minister under Prime Minister Manuel Valls, he quit to launch a new party. He is now the favourite to become France's next president. If he wins, Macron would become France's youngest ever president. Sunday's first round contest was held under tight security after a terror attack in Paris on Thursday night disrupted the final day of campaigning on Friday. The incumbent president, socialist Francois Hollande, made the decision not to run for a second term. He congratulated both the candidates who will face each other in the runoff for the presidency now. La première étape qui doit conduire les Français à l'Elysée est franchie. Ce résultat est historique. Il fait reposer sur moi désormais la responsabilité immense de la défense de la nation française. Je souhaite, dans 15 jours, devenir votre président. Le président de tout le peuple de France. Le président des patriotes. Face à la menace des nationalistes. More news from across the globe now in World Rap. Britain's immigration officials have detained 38 Indians, including nine women, for overstaying their visas or working illegally. The detention came after raids in two clothing factories in the city of Leicester. The two firms could face fines of up to £20,000 for each illegal worker if it is proven that they did not take steps to establish their employees' legal status. Saudi Arabia King Salman has named one of his sons an Air Force pilot who has taken part in coalition strikes against the Islamic State group as the ambassador to the United States. The development came as the country's ties are improving with the U.S. under President Donald Trump. The appointment came among a series of orders issued by the king, who shuffled his cabinet, restored the civil service benefits and replaced the head of the army. North Korea says it is ready to sink a U.S. aircraft carrier to demonstrate its military might. The statement came as the two Japanese Navy ships joined a U.S. carrier group for exercises in Western Pacific. Earlier, U.S. President Donald Trump ordered the U.S.'s uh, Carl Vinson Carrier Strike Group uh, to sail to the waters of the Korean Peninsula to respond uh, to rising tension over North Korea's nuclear and missile tests. Afghan families uh, buried their dead and the country observed a national day of mourning on Sunday. This after at least 100 soldiers were killed or wounded in a Taliban attack on a military base on Friday, prompting angry calls for ministers and army chiefs to resign. The toll from the assault in northern province of Balkh reached 130 reportedly. It was the deadliest ever attack by the Taliban on a military base, more than 15 years after they were ousted from power. And on to some sports news now. Well, Rafael Nadal claimed his record 10th uh, Monte Carlo Masters title with a straight set uh, victory over fellow Spaniard Albert Ramos Vinolas on Sunday. 
The 14 times Grand Slam champion was always in command of the match as he won 6 1 6 3. It was Nadal's first title in a whole almost a year as he became the first man in the Open era to win the same event 10 times. Meanwhile, uh, India's Rohan Bupana and his uh, Uruguayan partner Pablo Cubas oh uh, lifted uh, the men's uh, doubles trophy <laughs> after registering a hard-fought three-set win over Spain's uh, Feliciano Lopez and Mark Lopez. The Indo-Uruguayan pair uh, won a 6-3, 3-6, 10-4 in the summit yeah. clash. That's it from me and my team in this edition of News. But news and updates continue on Rajasabha Television. Thanks for watching.